everybody, welcome to Reading Smoke with Phil Jost here at YouTube. Thanks for join, joining me on my channel. Here we're going to look at uh, the last five uh, videos, the last five weeks we've been talking about transitional attacks and using the Reading Smoke process to understand uh, what you should be looking for, what do you see, and what does that tell you, right? So typically when you have a transitional attack, you're, you're um, starting your attack outside the fire building. Uh, and in fact, you know, when I worked for Seattle, that's how we defined transitional attack. As a, we defined it as a uh, as an offensive attack that begins on the outside of the structure. Right? Pretty simple definition, but um, in in those cases, and, and really in all cases, once you start to apply water, uh, you want to have a rapid impact on the fire itself, and therefore the smoke. Right, and so. We're going to look at today as an example. This is from the Broken Arrow Fire Department, and uh, there's links in the show notes for sure to the original video. Um, I actually use this uh, in, a, in a different Reading Smoke video episode, uh, Art of Reading Smoke episode 58, and again, there's a link to that in the show notes. But uh, let's just show them as they're coming in here. We're always going to start by looking at volume, velocity, density, color, and in this case, what we're looking at right is right here in the in the doorway. Um, low volume, basically laminar, thin, grayish, right, dark gray maybe. Uh, smoke coming out of this garage. Notice there's nothing coming out of the other garage, um, and then the lieutenant here goes to check the house, right? So. What we're looking at is probably a garage fire. Okay, that's uh, you know, like I said, you can go back to the the other episode I have linked and spend a little more time on that um, because that's not a primary focus day. We're we're trying to learn something just a slightly different from the same video, and that's one of the things I like is that about teaching reading smoke is that there's really a lot to learn from every video. Um, really a lot to learn so we're gonna we're gonna pop forward just a bit here we're just gonna take another look uh right in here right that so we're roughly two minutes later and uh, they're gonna get going here but you'll notice nothing coming out of the door right nothing coming out of the door there but the smoke coming out of the garage is basically steady state right over the course of three minutes small low volume laminar thin and in that gray scale it might be a little darker it's hard for me to know for sure but uh, basically we have um, essentially a steady state fire over the course of a couple of minutes now they're going to get this garage door open we're going to pop it forward uh, just as they get the garage door here we go and Notice here that um, as soon as they open the garage door, as soon as they add ventilation to the mix, right, the fire does start growing. They're ready. They got their line. Uh, lots of the last pieces are sort of moved out of the way, and they're going to get this line inside here. So uh, pretty, uh, pretty starting to grow bigger, right? So higher volume, uh, some turbulence here now. We're basically on the top third of the door for a neutral plane. Right, so air going in, smoke coming out. Um, turbulent, thick, black smoke basically is where we are now. You know, it's not super, super thick yet, so maybe in the middle on the density, uh, but definitely some turbulence, um, maybe right on the edge of that transition from laminar turbulent. But the fire is significantly growing now because it has access to uh, uh, an oxygen supply, an air supply, right? So they're going to hit it. So um, now, if we look at the size of this garage, we understand this is a this looks like an inch and three quarter line. It's going to be full of minimum 150 GPM, probably somewhere between 165 and 185. In this space, it should have a rapid, right? A rapid uh, influence on the fire behavior, right? So if it starts putting the fire out, you're going to see. Um, a change or right? a change in volume velocity density color right the, the volume uh, might initially go up with that conversion to steam uh, velocity should drop density should drop and the color should obviously change to some version on the grayscale on the white end of the grayscale as the fire starts to get significantly impacted 
by the water supply. So that's what we expect. If we're hitting the water in the sea of the fire, that's what we expect. And that's what we would expect from a transitional attack. Now this isn't technically going to be a transitional attack because they're going to be inside. They're going to be barely inside the door. But I think it's not um, a long distance to extrapolate uh, that you could be outside a window, right, or uh, something like that and have this sort of smoke condition, think you're putting the water into the fire room. Right, because um, the the most likely thing is you try and if you're if you've selected an offensive attack that begins on the outside of the structure, transitional, right? That you're trying to get the water into the seat of the fire or into the primary fire room. Okay, so um, if if they're in the fire room and they start flowing this water, they should see a rapid change in their volume, velocity, density, color. Notice he's only about two feet, three feet in there, and he's operating. And we're actually seeing basically no change in any way to the column of smoke, right? This all this fuel still superheated a little bit, maybe a little bit of change over to white, but still um, a lot of turbulent thick black smoke, right? No significant change in the fire behavior. Now they notice the same thing. Okay, we're gonna they're gonna move, right? They're gonna move over to the other side of the garage. Maybe we didn't hit it. You're going to move over there, and I obviously don't know the conversation they're having about what's going on, but we're going to try over here, and they're operating, right? And they're getting a significant amount of water into that space, but with basically no change, right? So when that happens, right, so you think you're in the right spot, you're applying water, it doesn't seem to be having the right um, or the impact that you expect, you, you have to quickly start thinking, okay, wait a minute, where is the fire? If the fire's not in this room, if I'm not putting it out by applying water into this space, I have adequate water, I'm applying it properly, like all those things are true, which I'm sure they're true when you're operating. They're true here. They're putting a pretty significant amount of water in there with zero impact on volume, velocity, density, color immediately as quickly as possible think okay where if the fire's not here where is the fire and in this case the fire is over in this other garage my uh, guess is I don't know for sure my guess is my read is the read of the smoke is that uh, there's a man door between these two garage sections and so the fire that's in here is going uh, the air is going in through here right and then uh, through the man door. So at this man door, you also have a bi-directional flow. Fresh air going in at the bottom, smoke coming out of the top, and pretty significant amount because even by the time it gets to this big open door, it's basically uh, uniform flow in the top third, right? So significant working fire over here in the space. And um, so as we look at this, right, and they start to go, wait a minute, why? This is, I'm projecting, right? Why isn't this fire going out? Uh, we're flowing water in here and the fire's just not going out. They're gonna operate some more. And again, you're gonna see no change, right? So if you're having an impact on the fire, you should see, you're gonna see uh, the volume may actually go up as, as we get that steam conversion, but the velocity and the density should, should be a rapid and sustained decrease in velocity and density and a really a pretty rapid color change over to very light gray, right? So you get billowing. Even though the volume's up, right, you get billowing smoke that as that changes to steam, it billows out. Um, almost immediately, it doesn't have that much energy, so almost immediately it'll, uh, it'll drop its energy, which is why we don't call it turbulent. It's just billowing, right? Uh, because of the volume, that volume push from that conversion to steam and that's not the case here, right? Now they do get this other door open, they fight the fire over here, right? They get this thing put out. Uh, and if we, if you can go back to the original version uh, where I use this video, episode 58, and talk about it more, but if you're on the outside of the building and you're doing a transitional attack and you start the attack and it's not having that rapid and sustained decrease in velocity and density, you gotta think to yourself, okay, where is it? And that's true if you're inside the structure as well, right? If you're fighting fire, if you have the right line in the right location with the right flow, and you're not having the impact that you should have, you gotta start thinking about what's happening and how to adjust your strategy, tactics, and task in order to meet your objective 
which is to save lives, right? The mission is to save lives. All right, so, hey, thanks for being with me here today. Every week here at uh, the YouTube page for the Reading Smoke, uh, Reading Smoke, The Art of Reading Smoke, The Next Generation, uh, with Phil Jose, and I'm Phil Jose. Thanks for being with me. I'm out.